Hi everyone and welcome to KD Conversations, uh, next uh, edition in our series. Um, this afternoon we are delighted to uh, be joined by um, Ed Hudson and Phil from uh, Create Health who are um, physically near neighbours of, uh, of us at KD in, in Bristol um, and uh, neighbours in terms of subject area that, um, uh, that they cover. So we'll let um, Phil and Ed uh, talk a bit more about um, th their business in a second, but, but essentially uh, they're, they're working in um, medical marketing communications, which uh, if you if you drew a Venn diagram of, of the sort of activities that um, we get involved in at Can You Do Four on the medical product development uh, alongside one about the, the important aspects of communications, then there's an interesting intersection there. And I think um, that's something that um, we've been exploring a bit with the, the guys at, at Create Health. So, so we thought this would be a good opportunity to share some of those thoughts and see where that interesting space meets in the middle. Um, so um, welcome, uh, Ed and Phil. Thank you. Um, do you. Do you want to sort of give, give a little intro about, um, about Create Health? Absolutely, yeah. So thank, thank you very much for inviting us on. Uh, it's nice to, to, uh, to be able to talk in a, in a shared environment. So we're Create Health, we're a strategic uh, creative healthcare agency. Uh, we've been going over a decade. Uh, as Craig said, we're, we're also Bristol-based. Although our clients aren't, um, about 70% of our clients are European and global, and by global, probably more sort of US. So we work with the likes of Thermo Fisher, VD, Comatech, uh, Sanofi, uh, we are we are we are medical device, uh, very much in that to B two B space, but also that B two B two C. Um, like 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 KD, we uh, cross all sort of therapy areas. We have a, a rich uh, rich rich heritage across all therapy areas. But I'd probably say cardiology, diabetes, ophthalmology. Uh, uh, certainly, the last sort of, sort of 12, 18 months of where we've uh, done more work. Um, so in terms of what we actually do, uh, I'll, I'll hand over to Phil to, to say what Thanks very much. Yeah, in terms of uh, core services for us, um, we're big believers obviously being a strategically led agency that you shouldn't do anything without good insight, a real understanding of, uh, of the unmet need that you're trying to solve. So a big part of what we do is, is insight driven uh, and research work um, that then informs kind of the strategy usually at a comms level. Then obviously we fall through into the, the bucket that I, I head up, which is very much the creative offering, where we, there isn't much that we don't do. Um, and that's one of the things that I particularly love about the business is, uh, is helping our clients really understand the power of, of creativity and what it can do for them. Great, great, good. Okay, and so, I mean, it's, um, uh, sorry, I should just, first of all say, I'm joined uh, today also from our side by uh, my Kerry Briggs, our, our head of um, medical. So uh, welcome, Kerry. Thank you, Rick. Um, uh, we've we've experienced all of us, you know. Uh, I think what we might describe as an interesting year for healthcare. Um, yes. where, you know, perhaps healthcare has never been more front and central um, in, in the news. Um, and I think you know the communications around that. Um, you know, whether it's if you think broadly around prevention, you know, with, with distancing, masks, etc. Um, you know, that that's that's been uh, you know an important element of uh, the handling of the pandemic pandemic sorry um, and if you're thinking about the cure with the vaccine you know the, the interesting aspects of that around communication and miscommunication uh, you know and how that will affect uh, the, uh, the the rollout of that so um, Kerry I think you had a sort of question to kick us off in terms of um, uh, healthcare this year. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess I'm interested to know how you think the pandemic has changed the healthcare world. We've seen lots of different information, both good and bad, about the vaccine. And I think we've probably all got our own personal opinions. But how do you think this kind of market has changed based yeah. on the changes we've seen? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with Craig. I think it's been a fascinating year. If you look at all the public health messages um, sort of coming out of Downing Street, how science has absolutely come to the fore, uh, you know, in, in some ways, that, that's great. I think... I think in some ways um, it's almost like nudge theory on steroids, isn't it? It's sort of, I think it's stuff that was happening anyway that's been accelerated and, and really sort of uh, brought to light. So an obvious one for me is, is is point of care. So point of care, we very much always thought about it's hospital. You know, you go in, you, you see your clinician. But if that can't happen, what do you do? Um, things like, so we work in wound care and we have very real experiences with our clients that um, they couldn't get out you know, couldn't get out to see patients, so tissue, tissue viability nurses that would 
you know, go and see sort of patients once a week. If you can't do that, what are you going to do? And, and it's a lot of around educating the patient or getting the patient a lot more involved in sort of self-care, which I think is a trend that's been going on for frankly years and, and needs to in terms of the uh, the healthcare systems, both the UK, the NHS, but also sort of globally. It's how we pay for our care is becoming more and more of an issue. So I, I think that's actually been a real positive, you know, in terms of getting patients uh, uh, to take more responsibility for their care, but also from a communication perspective, as communicators and marketeers, giving them tools that are actually useful um, and enabling them to uh, be that follower, an animation, uh, a video, uh, even a simple leaflet. Um, it, it's getting them a lot more involved in the care, which I, I think is a really positive thing. Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen for, for quite a long time, there's been a trend within healthcare, as you say, Ed, for people to take more control of their own health. You know, that, that what we'd previously would have called consumer health, I think, has merged very much more into kind of more of a clinical aspect. And, and uh, I think from my perspective, COVID has kind of forced the, the hand of the healthcare professionals that we work with. The wound care is a good example. Do you think that that trend is only going to continue or do you think people, yes. you know, do you think people have reacted well to, to having that ownership over their own health? Um, absolutely, yes. I mean, I, you know, I, the whole thing about sort of reading age, isn't it? You know, the reading age of, you know, the uh, average sort of consumer, you know, be that 9, 10, 11, 13, you know, the sun through to the sort of guardian. We, I think, are guilty in healthcare of uh, perhaps overly complicating things. Um, like all industries using acronyms and sort of terms or medical terms, which uh, in some ways alienate the patient because it's, you know, oncology or cancer. You know, everyone first it's cancer, not oncology. And you know, we, we've had client conversations and said, look, um, one of the one of the healthcare practitioners said uh, to one of our, our clients who has, I think, a 11 year old and a nine year old boy, he said, if your sons can understand how to do this, then we've got it right. As in, and it's not about sort of dumbing down, and, but it, it's about making content accessible and consumable um, and actually uh, helping that process. I, I think it's really exciting. I think it's um, it's what needed to happen and we'll see more of it. Yeah, and I think that message, sorry, Craig. Okay. I just was going to say, I think that message about making healthcare accessible to everybody and that point about not necessarily the, the dumbing down, but making sure people understand how to use products that goes not just for the kind of communication side of things, but I think that's just as important in product development in terms of the devices that we are developing to make sure that kind of across the board, it's very clear how they're used and that they're as simple um, uh, as possible to make it something that people feel confident to use and actually can feel like they are taking control of their own health by um, by taking ownership of, of the use of the products. Sorry, Craig, I interrupted. Yeah, I was just going to also sort of make the observation um, uh, about that intersection point between medical products and systems and, and the communications and, and in that intersection point, um, which I think has come to the fore, particularly during COVID, is, is often when the therapy is delivered via communication, you know, that, that, that uh, you know, if you take um, uh, you know, take things like diabetes care, so, so much of um, outcomes for people with diabetes is about um, those touch points with healthcare professionals, how they're supported in, in, in making lifestyle changes that could affect their, their health. So whilst we might be working on um, apps to, uh, to, to support um, people with diabetes and their healthcare professionals, actually the, 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 the exchange of information and, and the, the communications and support that they get, um, which is not, you know, not, not sort of marketing related, but it's very much in that space in between uh, that is so critical to, you know, to achieving good outcomes is a really interesting space. And I think that has been, um, it's probably one of the areas that we're certainly aware of that has changed, uh, been forced to, to adapt to conditions over COVID by, uh, you know, more video consultations, things like that, which in some cases has actually increased the communication between patients and healthcare professionals. Um, so some interesting stuff that might, uh, you know, might stick a bit, um, even even beyond the, you know, the backlog that's been created by, um, you know, by conditions over the last nine months. Um, interesting area. Absolutely. And I think, you know, to pick up on a few points there that you were saying, Craig, I think one of the things we've particularly 
uh, I suppose it's a weird thing to, to position it this way, but one of the really good things to come out of, of the pandemic has been the fact that uh, healthcare, I think, as a sector has embraced digital in a much more uh, forthright manner. I think there's always been a nervousness around how you use uh, digital media, be that in the mark truest sense of, of marketing or, or in more of the education space. But quite frankly, they've had to embrace it because, you know, we've all had to go remote sales forces haven't been able to go and do the meet and greet and the usual relationship pieces that they would in hospital etc just as ed was saying earlier patients haven't been able to necessarily be you know in those buildings either so the embracing of, of digital as a whole and that content and, and, and making it as relevant and as e easy and accessible as possible has been a, a real positive actually and something that we really hope continues to, to grow because i think pa pa patients and hcps alike are benefiting benefiting from it yeah, yeah. The one of my um, uh, I, I quote this loads of times. So one of my favourite quotes actually from from John Scully, the uh, the former um, Apple CEO, um, who um, you, you might remember originally came from Pepsi and then sort of you know famously sacked Steve Jobs and um, uh, but you know certainly knows a bit about um, uh, you know about marketing um, and and you know subsequently went into investment um, you know high tech investment in areas like healthcare. He kind of said a few years ago. That noted that healthcare, in his words, were, uh, has been the last major industry that hasn't been touched by technology in terms of productivity and consumer adoption in the way that so many other industries have. Um, and I think I think there is a bit of a catch up, Phil. I, I agree, and I think you know the the forced nature of, of of having to adapt this year. You know, I I agree and hope that that might be a trigger to to really move on because it's undoubtedly true that in a lot of areas healthcare is way behind other. Um, other services that that we access as as consumers, and we don't always think of ourselves as consumers in in a healthcare context. But it's you know it, it, in my view it should be no different really than than accessing financial services um, or you know or, or other services that you might need in 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 your life. So you know I think um, you know that aspect. I know that the the healthcare has not got a great rec track record in terms of adoption of technologies, often because it's having to be done at such a big scale that it becomes too too big a challenge. But um, uh, you know, interested in your thoughts on on how you see technology and, and modern methods of communication being properly adopted by healthcare systems, uh, perhaps uh, triggered you know, and pushed forward a bit by the pandemic. Yeah, I, I think that I think the pandemic we just just quickly, almost a, a quick one on that, um, on the diabetes point that, you know, uh, you know, having an app to, um, you know, blood gl glucose monitoring and, 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 and links with a sort of clinician in any other industry, that's not big news. It's just sort of, it's what you do, financial services, leisure, you know, booking a squash court in, in you know, in the pre-COVID days or whatever, you know, in your local leisure centre. So I, I think that, um, I actually think I think healthcare is catching up, you know, in terms of using the using that tech. You know, we've seen it in um, you know conferences, you know, because we've not been able to go to our, our sort of trade shows, our typical uh, tra healthcare trade show. Thinking about thinking about sort of communication, thinking about more of the virtual world, um, and I, I think that's really exciting. I think it's just it's forced us to catch up, and it's forced us probably to stop referring to. Um, you know, the, the whole patients and consumer, you know, patients is, uh, of course, they are patients, but it, it, it almost feels quite hierarchical in terms of the healthcare professional and then the patients at the end, and they just get given what they're given and they should be jolly grateful. You know, that's almost flipped on its head, hasn't it, in terms of, you know, we're talking about consumers now, and you, you talk about, you know, KD's work in terms of, you know, making products um Desirable is probably, uh, you know, we're not creating the next, I, you know, iPhone or whatever. However, efficacy and, you know, using these products, why should they be different? You know, well, why should there be a gap? And I think more and more as well, consumers, you know, won't won't tolerate that. Won't tolerate that just because it's healthcare. Why does it have to be a bit clunky or, you know, not very desirable? Uh, you know, I think, I think it opens up a brave new world for us. And I think the pandemic. Um, AI, VI, you know, bringing these to the fore, um, you know, as well as that self-care, I think it, it it's, it's great. I think it just sort of, it brings in more into that consumer realm, which, which it probably needed.
Yeah, and to that point, Ed, um, you know, you talked about diabetes there. I think that we've seen a number of different products and platforms, you know, the likes of MySugar, where the consumers, ultimately the patients, don't think the treatment they're getting is good enough. And so they've actually gone out on their own and started their own platform. And I think we'll start to see that kind of more and more as as consumers feel that they're not getting the products that they need and, and can find ways to kind of support themselves and each other a little bit better. And the kind of digital platform really enables um, them to do that at, at quite a pace, um, which is well, really interesting. It is really interesting. And I think, you know, to pick up on that, Kerry, the bit that I find fascinating is that it all comes down to trust. Um, and, you know, without wishing to, to get political here, I think one of the, the fascinating things for us is that, you know, in the last kind of decade or so, there has been a, a real failing of governments and big corporates. Um, and I think that has eroded the general public's trust of, of many, many things, which is why I think, you know, we, we have done a lot of studies which have shown that, you know, a lot of people with, uh, you know, diabetes would rather listen to someone else with the same condition and hear what worked for them and then a group of them, because actually there's a sense of we're in it together, not necessarily a bias potentially coming from a from a, a brand that's in that space that obviously you know supports but also profits off off that space so I think it's going to be really interesting because yeah trend is definitely shifting to more of protection and looking after my own health uh, but brands have really got to strike the right balance in terms of how they interact because there's so much goodness for them to learn um, in terms of insights from these these patient groups. Yeah I think it's a great point Phil and, and um, I'm interested in you know from from the perspective of your work, Phil and Ed, you know, um, you're, you know, often about trying to communicate in the right way, that, you know, the, the, the benefits and the attributes of a particular product or as, as service. How, uh, how do you think in that sort of more, um, in that context of people taking more uh, progressive control over their own health, thinking about preventative health and so on. How do you turn that communication, you know, to, to the front end of things so that, so that um, you know, healthcare is, is not just something that's kind of done to us um, when things go wrong, but, you know, but, but there's much more engagement with it um, at a sort of preventative, you know, um, lifestyle level. How, 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 how do we turn that that around a bit and, and make it into a positive thing? Because as we said, it's not it's not a desirable, um, you know, no one wants to to have to use healthcare products and services. They're just an inevitability. But how, how, how do we turn that into a, a positive and, and get people thinking about it up front? Um, I think it comes down to brands being a bit braver and, and potentially uh, focusing more on the longer term of a management of a condition rather than potentially the point at which there's an easier sell for them in terms of there is a diagnosis, so therefore I need product X or service, you know, Y. I, I think we're seeing a shift with a lot of the bigger brands that we work with that they recognise that being that that brand that is uh, essentially with them by their side for the longer term management of their condition, be it diabetes, wound care, whatever it might be, that's where there's the, the real opportunity for them to, to build that trust, to build their brand and to really support in other aspects of the management of a condition. Um, I'm conscious we've all said, you know, diabetes a lot. It's, it's obviously a subject that therapy era, both businesses cover in great detail. But I think that's a really interesting one because there are so many facets to that. You know, there's the diet and exercise. There's obviously the insulin management itself, but there's also the injection technique, which is often something that is forgotten about, but it can make a, a pivotal difference to the condition and management of, of, of someone living with diabetes. So, as I said, I think the, the, the big thing we need brands to do is embrace the fact that they shouldn't just be there for that moment when there's an injection needed. They should be there for the, the 24 hours a day that that patient is going through the ups and downs of the of the uh of the condition that they have, because I think certainly with uh, with chronic conditions of which we're seeing more and more in different areas of the body, you know, it's it, there are going to be highs and lows and, and brands need to recognise that there's a role for them to play at different points of that journey. So I suppose, yeah, we need to, everyone to truly understand and empathise with the end user of any of these products or services. Yeah, I think just to add to that as well, I think there's a shift in, in healthcare as well. I think. I think the pandemic, I think it was happening anyway, but I think, you know, pandemic had moved from, it's an odd thing to say, but from business to brand, you know, there was a lot of um, create a product, um, talk a lot about um, the, the features of it, you know, make sure the sales reps are fully up to speed with the features, you know, go and sell it to the clinicians. 
clinicians then maybe sort of filter it through um, to the patients. And it's, it's a very transactional sales led businesses. And so I think the notion of building the brand, being on the sort of, you know, that, that sort of customer journey is is newer. You know, that we think about, I don't know, when iPod launched, you know, there was, I can't remember, the, there was a competing product. It was all about the features, how many gig or RAM or whatever um, the product had and how many, you know, it was all about the features. And then I came back to Steve Jobs, which is, you know, a thousand songs in your pocket. And you go, okay, yeah, I get that. And I, I think we're, we're seeing more actually within our client base that, um, Clients coming from B two C marketing uh, into the B two B world to 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 inject that you know brand knowledge um, you know that, that customer lifetime value, especially with it within healthcare. And to Phil's point, chronic wounds it's sadly they're a captive audience. You know if you've got a if you've got a chronic condition, uh, you know that could be you for life. Certainly true of diabetes. So there's there's huge value for clients there. So I think so I think yeah the, the whole the the, the 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 you know the brand piece comes through more and more. Um, therefore, the need to improve that sort of communication, and and you also mentioned as well about you know um, Doctor Google and the you know democratization of data, and more and more it's actually patients that consumers are going well. Actually, I've been online, I've, I've been to my you know group or whatever it might be, um, and I, and I feel quite empowered with this sort of knowledge. So to, to a degree, it's, it's sort of healthcare companies catching up a bit and going, Christ, you know, we we need to maybe get on the front foot a bit here. Um, and, and, you know, maybe it's not just all about, you know, equipping the sales rep with the latest brochure. We're going to have to be, do a better job with consumers and patients because there's demand there. But boy, what an opportunity as well. These are big businesses that, um, you know, are producing a, a lot of fantastic products. Um, and there's a huge opportunity there from a, from a brand and an engagement perspective. Yeah, just picking up that, that point, Ed, the, have you seen a shift... Um, in the in your work, in terms of your, um, you know, the the marketing communications material you produce being more targeted at patients as at consumers, where, you know, whereas you know a lot of the customers within that market, of course, are going to be healthcare professionals um, and you know um, payers um, of, of those systems. Have you seen a trend there? Absolutely, yeah, and I think the. Um let's say the old world the old world was very much about sort of um if you're in some ways educating the healthcare professional on a product say uh in terms of what it does efficacy um what it's achieving clinically um and then you're sort of relying on that healthcare professional to be that filter to translate through to the patient you know uh going back to diabetes again as we've been talking about it you know sort of you know glucose monitoring bolus you know sort of uh, 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 blood test, etc. These still are quite, you know, phlebotomy. It's still quite medical terminology, and it's totally not accessible to to, to the everyday sort of patient or you know consumer all these days. Um, so then I think the you know uh, our clients were sort of uh, tooling the, um, the the healthcare professionals with with better forms of communication. So let's not do a brochure, let's do a PowerPoint. Hey, we can do better than a PowerPoint, we can do a digital sales aid. So we've seen that journey, but more and more now they are looking more towards uh, patient communication. And I think that's a that is a challenge and a shift. One of our clients has merged their B2B and B2C departments because B2B were fantastic on the, on the, on the product knowledge and the therapy areas, but not as strong on the communications. The B2C department were great on the communications, but a little bit thin on the on the scientific and medical knowledge. So you can see that merging together and working together. Uh, and and more and more, we're talking about how we can uh, how we can uh, educate and engage the uh, the patient because ultimately, this, as I think you mentioned at the top, Craig, this is about efficacy, isn't it? The 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 success of, of uh, you know for everyone involved is is that it works. Adherence. They actually use the kit. Um, because they can, uh, and because they, you know, they want to. Um, so yeah, we were absolutely 100% sh- seeing that shift uh, to to consumer communications, which uh, the terminology we often use in house is, you know, B to B to C is that business and business audience that now needs to uh, communicate with their consumers. And, and I think some clients absolutely embracing that and loving it. Some marketeers within. Our, 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 you know, our, our clients are really excited by that because it's, they can do sort of sexy things with apps and AR and VR, and they can and they can immerse themselves in in, 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 in new tech. Um, and then other other departments, it's um, 
or other or other client clients is sort of caught them on the hop a little bit really you know sort of doing an email is just not quite good enough and sort of um and also the uh, we're also uh, all guilty of not being able to digest a large brochure anymore we've got to be scanning stuff that's got to be on our on our, you know, on our, on our fingertips and I, and I think that consumable content comes into that more and more and more in terms of genuinely thinking about the patient how they're going to consume that content and also uh, different age ranges as well you know a lot of the a lot of the uh, a lot of the patients consumers uh, tend to be older uh, you know how are you going to make it accessible for them and uh, and we we're seeing a lot more in terms of animation and video because it's an easier way to describe something, isn't it? In terms of you know how to uh, you know how do I use this um, how do I use this device? We're all used to now that sort of plug and play. You know you you know you whack it in the in the old days of a CD, wasn't it? But you should put a sort of CD in and it used to pop up and explain how you did it. Now it's just it's just automatic an app. Um, so that yeah, so that that, that content is very long answer, but. Um, yeah, I think it's exciting because it, it brings us, it brings us on a par with other industries, and I think that's exciting for marketeers because that's the sort of stuff that uh, I imagine most people entering the industry now. That's what they want to be working on. How do you think, Ed, that like the regulators can help to support this change and and improve the communications that are going out to the consumers? We see quite a lot, I think, in medical product development that there's still a challenge with the regulators trying to get on board with kind of more digital products understand how to kind of test and evaluate them and make sure that they are safe for the users even things like you know we're still not allowed a digital ifu you still have to print out these enormous um, amounts of pages that are shipped with every product and um, do you see there being a place in kind of medical communications for the regulators to support that better communication and the improvements that you're talking about Absolutely, and I think it's it's education. We, we we do a bit of work in pharma as well, and we've done workshops with the with the regulators and workshops with the you know with the you know brand marketeers. And it, it is about sort of um, it is about taking them on the journey as well. You know, we're, we're we're probably all guilty of spending years developing a product and then getting the regulators in the last minute and wanting them to approve it within a nanosecond. And so oh, hold on a minute, you know, what is this? You know, go back to the you know the farmer space as well. How how can you ensure that um, you know, how can you ensure that that that, that communication is um, fully approved when you've got dynamic websites and scrolling content and and all, and all the rest of it? But I, I think as as marketers and we've we've just got to uh, help the regulators. And I think also we've got to um, yeah you know bring them on board a little bit really and and, and work with them um, because. You know, technology is moving at such a pace as well, and our, our communications moving at such a pace. You know that sort of you know apps is very. It's just what it is now. It's just there's no big shakes there, but sort of AR, virtual reality, and you know animation. That, that, that that's the new world, and I think yeah, we, we just have to partner better and, and also accept that you know we work in you know we work in you know marketing, uh, you know or product development. That's our world. You know that, that's what we do. We're totally immersed in it the regulators less so that's not their world so i think it's probably incumbent on us to do a better job of bringing them on board because um i don't see why they necessarily need to be a blocker but we probably have to help them as well and rather than you know we're, we're probably all in a situation where it's, it's easy to blame the regulator or it's easy to uh, gosh why don't they get it but i think i think we just have to you know probably bring them into the fold a little bit more yeah i think um i, I know that um bringing creativity into an area that's, that's a challenge because of things like regulation is, is a key passion of, of, of yours. Um, when, when we were kind of preparing uh, you know, our, our ideas for, you know, for this discussion, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd come across uh, an interesting piece in the Harvard Business Review from um, Anne Wojcicki, the, uh, the CEO of 23andMe. Um, and it was actually right on, you know, it covers both of these topics really, the, 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 Creativity communications one, but also the regulatory one. In that, um, you know, that's that's a new product, um, from, you know, from from a few years ago. You know, that that people, um, you know, suddenly now able to do their own um, genetic decoding um, and, and uncover you know aspects of of their ancestry, but also their their health predispositions. Um, and of course, and they they invested a lot in marketing communications to to get this new product um, pushed out. Having become sufficiently successful 
that enough people were, were, were doing it that attracted the attention of the FDA, um, who then, you know, said, hang on, guys, you can't, you can't just be doing this, even though they already were. Um, and so they re rechanneled really all their communications efforts um, that have been so superbly done on, on the marketing and advertising side into the communication of the interpretation of the results that people were um, you know, were getting from from these tests. So I think it's a really interesting uh, topic about, you know, it's it's a new, it's about, you know, it's a creative approach, um, you know, using new technology and, and price availability of a test like that. Um, you know, and, it, and it perhaps signals, you know, some of the ways that, that healthcare will change, but also some of the, you know, the challenges and approaches and how to balance the needs of, um, you know, being creative, attracting new interest, but also staying uh, in step with the regulators. Um, so, so that you know, from talk a bit about that in terms of your approach to cre creativity being you know playing a real part in healthcare in the future. Yeah, so I mean, I think you know, uh, as we've discussed, as you know, we we believe that creativity is the cure. Um, and and just to kind of unpack that a little bit, I mean, I think there is just a firm held belief that men and women of science only think rationally um, and are devoid of any kind of emotion and so therefore you need to talk to them in a similarly scientific and rational way. Um, what we find time and time again is the more you can truly understand that end user, that HCP type who is in a professional setting, the moment you really understand what the, the kind of emotive factors are and uh, at play and, and really kind of build that picture it's how you can really build a connection and I think you know great creativity uh, comes when it's matched with science so you need that initial idea that spark that catches that attention and then motivates them to do something because I think if you just go in with you know a picture of a white box and a machine that pings and 24 features such as in multiple cup holders or things that it has ultimately you you fall into a comparative space where there's always going to be something that's better or new and shiny if you can have something that comes from much more emotive seat you're going to have something that resonates for a much longer time um, so i think you know the the great way of getting creativity in is not being creative for creative sake it's making sure it's got a commercial edge to it but more importantly one that connects with the with the hcp type and just to come in on there as well yeah that, that emotional emotional connection versus sort of uh, rational um, is that is that you know it um, goes back to uh, behavioural economics and um, uh, you know you know back in the day that we're not rational beings that's not how we make decisions we're emotional beings and you know that that emotional decision making um, and having empathy with that healthcare professional but that's a it's an exciting it's an exciting area for us just to really tap into the seat of a, uh, a seat of emotion and get that behaviour change which is ultimately what we do as marketeers, you know, and you know, products as well, and getting that, you know, getting that behavior change, getting that adoption and adherence. Um, I think we see more and more of that in healthcare communications. And, and, and frankly, you know, the uh, over the counter, you know, the, you know, consumer healthcare has been doing it for years. You know, that it's not a, it's not a, it's not a new secret. It's, um, it's the way that we engage with sort of, you know, products. And we were talking about brand earlier. So for us, that's, it, it's exciting. There's also, a lot, of, a lot, uh, and we're working with a film I want to speak to, that we're looking at how we test that creative and, and try and get away from that subjectivity because it's always what we think and the client thinks in the room. Uh, of course, we do our, our insight piece and, you know, talk towards the patients but um, or, the, or the HCPs, but sometimes we are probably all guilty of uh, going down routes that we resonate with more so uh, that taking the subjectivity out of it and, and tapping into emotions is very much something we'll be looking at absolutely and i think sure. yeah i mean what's particularly exciting with that for us is that you know emotions can't be hidden um particularly on the face you might be able to, to choose your words carefully but i mean as, as ed referenced we're working with a company called kanjo who are, are bournemouth based and they've got a really clever piece of ai that essentially face maps for nano movements and looks at the different types of reaction when people are shown stimulus be that animation, films, even static ads. And it's really quite interesting to see how the cognitive load versus ease plays out, um, how quickly their eyes engage or don't, et cetera. And as I said, one of the things that we love about it is it's, it's, there's a science behind why good ads work the way they do. Um, and if you can truly embrace those and bring those into the world of health, you're going to have a really powerful kind of combination because the way cars and 
other brands have advertised to us for years is wonderfully entertaining, but they are selling us a thing. Uh, the thing I love about health is it's the one one thing that touches everybody, no matter uh, yeah, where you're from, how rich, poor, race, etc. Health is, you, you've either got it or you haven't, and it touches everyone. And it's the most emotive subject area to work in. So if we can then bring some creativity backed up by good science into it, by using clever bits of AI and and implicitly testing to really take out that subjectivity, then we're, we're in line to create stuff that's really going to connect, resonate and drive that change, which will, as we said earlier, hopefully help the prevention of things like type 2 diabetes. You know, it's a creation of our, our own and we need to work really hard to reverse the effects of it because it's going to plague a lot of us otherwise. Yeah, no, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a great sort of um, uh, point to start to round up on on Phil. You know, I, I you know, couldn't agree more that you know healthcare becomes the most important all of in all of our lives. You know, when when something goes wrong and needs attention, you know, and I think it's um, you know, it couldn't be more personal uh, and it can be more important to us all. So I think I think we we can all agree that um, uh, it's you know it's it's worthwhile connecting with. Uh, you know the, the emotional side as well as the functional side of the um, of, of the products and services that that we work on. So just perhaps to finish off, um, interesting your thoughts on um, you know on the future. What what you know what do you see for 2021 and and beyond? Perhaps sort of shaped by our um, uh, unexpectedly unusual year that we've had this year. What's um, what's your crystal ball saying about um, healthcare and communications? Well, I think, you know, as we probably can all agree on, it'd be fascinating to see how the rollout of the vaccine goes. Uh, obviously, I hope it goes incredibly well and in some ways removes some of the barriers that we've all experienced this year. Um, I think the lack of social contact has certainly been something I've struggled with, and it'd be very nice to be able to uh, see my friends again and, and meet up and, and socialise, because those things do matter to your mental health. Um, but I think in terms of next year, I mean, certainly from, from our perspective, uh, on a personal level, we're obviously going to be pushing our agenda of trying to get more brands to uh, embrace creativity and really show them the power of how that can drive uh, better marketing outcomes for them and obviously help, therefore, with their, their growth and, and their revenue targets, etc. cetera. Um, it, as an industry, I, I mean, I just really hope that we continue to see this embracing of, of digital, first and foremost, but also the recognising that not everything has to be treated in the hospital. I, I think there's so much that we rely on, particularly in the UK, uh, because of our glorious NHS, there's, there's too much that is done because it can be, not because it should be. And I, I really hope that uh, we start to see more people taking control with the guidance of HCPs at home and, and, and living happier, healthier lives. Yeah, just to echo that as well, I think the point of care shifting from hospital to home, I think we'll see more of that. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, face to face and digital, you know, we, we've talked a lot to clients and, and sales reps haven't been on the road because they can't. So forcing that, you know, into that sort of digital space, great. We'll see a lot more of that. Even video, you know, in terms of uh, where was that a year ago? In terms of sort of video conferencing, we were all sort of jet setting around the world, sort of, you know, with the clients and what have you. That acceptance that we can communicate in a different way and, and launch us into a into a new age. So I think, you know, the, the prevalence of the patients shifting points of care digital and technology coming through it's all good stuff and in it and it frankly um maybe we should thank the pandemic for that because i think it's probably shaved off two or three years in healthcare that we might have been a bit slower getting there i think it's accelerated all those things which although it's been a, a you know a tough year for, for us all frankly but i think there's some real positives come out of that and then and that just ain't going to change next year is it? that's not going to go backwards i just can't see that it's only going to go forwards and you know that saying that that nudge theory is is giving us a good old nudge that uh, it's 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 so it's exciting I think in terms of what you know what we can do next year really. I think just to just to finally add to that I think one of the things I'll be fascinated to see next year is is the is how HCPs across the board are generally seen and valued. I think for for many years those on the front line were slightly taken for granted and I think we've seen this year just how pivotal and important they really are. Um, you know we we have a lot to thank them for and I. I hope the the value of what they offer is is carries on and is recognised for years to come. To be honest with you, yeah, great great point. I'm sure we all um, echo that and continue our uh, clap for um, uh, for our, our heroes on the front line there for sure. Kerry, any thoughts on uh, on next year? No, I mean I think I have to agree. I think there's been a real change in perception of the people that look after us. 
Um, and also, I think, you know, from personal experience, I know several people that treatment for a variety of conditions had to stop. Um, so I think that awareness of how good our NHS is, um, not to kind of um, push the point too much, but I think we're all starting to kind of really appreciate it. Um, and I think overall that point, not just within communications, but within healthcare, again, of kind of really pushing that digital agenda um, is really key and people are really starting to kind of take responsibility for their own health. I think that will will only continue and I think that's great. And, and actually to continue to push that, I think it's, um, we've seen, you know, a number of the regulators move very quickly when you think about um, the, some of the work that were done on devices earlier this year to help patients breathe, but also now the vaccine and the fact they've been able to, to release that so quickly. I think we might also see a change in some of the regulatory processes and the fact that um, there is this recognition that this technology can be really beneficial to us all. So how do we make sure that we've got the right processes in place from a regulatory perspective to make sure that they're safe, but we can also get access to them kind of as quickly as possible. Great. Well, um lots lots to talk about i'm sure we'll have to we'll have to do this again guys so it's um it's been a real pleasure lots of interesting stuff to um thanks to um to to phil and ed from from create health i'm um, sure we'll be um uh, we'll be we'll be talking again on this subject thanks to you kerry uh we've been kd conversations uh and we'll um catch you next time thank you thanks so much thank you.